This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. In answering the questions of thousands of university students during the course of taping our on-campus radio series, I've discovered a great many who think religion is primarily for people getting ready to die. But the religion of Jesus is for people getting ready to live. To live in the great here and now, not merely in the sweet by and by. It not only makes death a joy, it makes life a joy. One day, talking with a student on campus at the University of Chicago, he said, I'm interested in the big questions, but all I hear are little answers. People are dissatisfied with trivial explanations and shallow thinking. The deepest need in human beings is the need for the real, the quest for the big answers, for the truth, for God. This is an age of tremendous philosophical seeking. There are more new cults and sects and isms and schisms and new religious groups springing up today than ever before in all of human history. Some of them will become significant. Others are low in substantial content. There was a visitor at an art exhibition one evening. He saw a blank canvas hanging on the wall, so he asked the artist, what's the meaning of that? The artist said, that, sir, is a cow grazing. The visitor said, but where's the grass? The artist said, the cow's eaten it. The visitor said, where's the cow? The artist said, you didn't expect the cow would be such a fool as to stay around after she'd eaten all the grass, would you? Such is the nature of many of the more fadistic religious cults and isms. A great many complicated explanations, but little or no substantial content. Yet Jesus' message was simple and it was vital and understandable. It says in the scriptures, the common people heard him gladly. There was and is a ringing and relevant message in his teachings, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. A doctor can put his stethoscope to your heart and feel your pulse and tell you whether you're alive, but he cannot tell you why you're alive. A scientist can test you to see whether you possess life, but no scientist can mathematically prove the purpose of life, the meaning of it. Only spiritual perception can adequately deal with these ultimate questions. Declared Jesus, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly, purposefully, joyfully. Sociologists and historians are saying this is a largely materialistic age, the age of frantic acquisition, the unceasing urge to accumulate more things. There is only one reason that more people in this country don't own a blimp. It's because they've never been offered a blimp for $10 down and $10 a month. There's been a near mania for increasing possessions, more and more things. And yet, said Jesus, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world, but lose his own soul? As a person becomes wiser and more discerning, he begins to realize how many things there are in the world you can't have even if you want them, and that you don't want even if you can have them. Man cannot live by bread alone. There are hungerings of heart and questings of spirit within you. You are a son or daughter of God. You were created by God and for God and nothing but God can ultimately satisfy your inward searching of soul. The spiritual life is the most important aspect of human existence. Mere material success cannot bestow the transcendent joys of living for the purposes of God. Alexander the Great was such a powerful military general that he once wept because he said there were no more nations for him to conquer. Yet he who conquered the world could not conquer himself, and he died in misery. The mighty conqueror Hannibal, who once filled three entire bushel baskets full of the gold rings he had cut from the fingers of enemy soldiers, committed suicide at last in a foreign land by taking poison and perished in despair. Julius Caesar conquered 800 cities. His armies slaughtered over a million enemies. He was the most powerful man on earth, yet he was stabbed to death by his associates and died in anguish. Napoleon Bonaparte, who had conquered and ruled all of Europe, died at last in lonely exile, a defeated and broken man. And Jesus said it well, Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust corrupt and thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt nor thieves break through and steal. For where your treasure is, said Jesus, there will your heart be also. If this world is one day to live as one planetary family... And if its population one day is to see an end to war, what is needed 
or not more high caliber artillery, but more high caliber people. Men and women who are loving and peaceful, only transformed individuals can create, eventually, a transformed world, spiritually changed people who are a brim with the love of God and the love of people. Consider what makes a river crooked following the line of least resistance. God created you to live in boldness and in valor, enjoying the challenges and actually delighting in the difficulties before you, growing, discovering the delight of the process of finding, knowing, and doing the will of God. The only exercise some people get is jumping to conclusions, running down their friends, sidestepping responsibility, pushing their luck, the sorts of people who will pat you on the back in front of your face and hit you in the eye behind your back. But in fact, one of the great joys of the spiritual life is doing good to people, being kind to people, love. There was an anti-Christian writer named Silas in the 3rd century A.D. who wrote in astonishment, quote, These Christians love each other, even before they're acquainted with each other. Declared Jesus, by this will all men know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. This is the love of God surging in the soul of the individual and into the life of others. Live both in love and in faith. Doubt limits abilities. It's as if you were a bricklayer and went out on the job every day with one hand tied behind your back. You would not be using your full potentials. Doubt is limiting in precisely that fashion. God is ever ready to help a person solve his or her problems. But God is by no means going to do everything for you. A grade school teacher asked the little boy, did your father help you work these arithmetic problems? He said, no, I got them wrong myself. God, too, is going to let you get some of your answers wrong yourself. God puts humankind into difficult and demanding world situations and challenges people then to grow. And part of the fun of it, part of the process of it, is the freedom to get some of your answers wrong. But the courageous meeting of problems is a central ingredient to greatness. However, the empty self-confidence of mere egocentricity is not the energy required for the living of life. You can't propel yourself forward through life by patting yourself on the back. You need more than empty vanity. You need spiritual energy, the very power of the Spirit of God. The kingdom of God, said Jesus, is within you. One of the basic desires of every person on this planet is the desire to get the most out of life, be you religious or unreligious, atheist or agnostic or theist. You want to get the most out of life. Dr. William C. Menninger the famed psychiatrist of Topeka, Kansas, has suggested the following practice. I quote, Set aside a little time, at least once a year, to decide where you're going. What are your priorities, ambitions, aspirations, not just in your business alone, but also in the personal things of life? Your free evenings, your own feelings of status, worthwhileness in life, your own integrity. And as another psychiatrist once said of prayer, man's alternative is to look up or crack up, to begin to have a transcendent philosophy on life and discover spiritual power or to face the stark brink of emotional downfall. There was a certain businessman, head of a large corporation, trembling on the verge of a nervous breakdown. He had a beautiful home replete with comforts and luxuries out in the country district, but he could not seem to find himself at rest. Continually he was agitated. His mind seemed in perpetual motion. At last, he visited a famous psychiatrist. In the quietness of the physician's consulting room, the doctor said, you're going to have to leave the city. Go to the country. But I live in the country, the man replied. There are miles and miles of woodlands and hills and grass and clean air all around where I live. The doctor said, well, then you'll have to have ease and comfort. I'm surrounded with that in my home. He said, I have servants. Well, then get some relaxation, said the doctor. Go to concerts, go to theaters, the movies. The man replied, I've got tickets for everything. I've been so often I've grown weary of all that. A strange quietness filled the office, and then the doctor looked at the man and said, you've come to the wrong position. It is peace of soul that you require, and medical science cannot give you that. Said Jesus, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world but lose his own soul? 
Come to me, he said, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My peace I give to you, the peace and the joy of living as the son or daughter of God by faith. You were born and created to be, finding why you're really alive, that God has a plan and purpose for you, and loving God and loving people. And that is a transformative experience. If you're interested in these topics, write to us. We want to hear from you at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. SRI, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, What Does Happen When You Die? If you're interested in these topics, no cost, no charge, no obligation, nobody's going to come to your door with an attache case and try to sell you something, simply write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute Box, 3080 Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.